The David Pakman Show is a viewer and listener supported program. The, the show we do every day, the podcast, the YouTube channel, the Spanish dubbing, the TV show, the radio show, the TikToks, all of this stuff. We have a team and the primary funding source for all of that is direct member subscriptions. I love that we make all of this stuff available for free. I also love, as we will talk about with David Sirota in a little bit, when we talk about how we fund what we do, we are mostly funded directly by the audience. The upside of this is there's no one company or person that can say we're shutting off the faucet unless you do X, Y, Z, because we spread out our support through our audience no one entity can shut us down effectively. The counterpoint to this is that sometimes people will email me and they'll say, David, I really didn't like what you said about whatever. I'm canceling my membership. Yes, we do have to deal with that, but we're in a position not to have to change what we do because we've upset anybody in particular leads to some awkward emails, I can tell you. Uh, but I believe that it is the best way to fund the work that we do. You can sign up at joinpacman.com. You we've got a long list of member benefits that you can read about there and you can use the coupon code 24 starts now to save yourself. A, it's a substantial discount. Let me put it that way. I don't want, you know, Tish James coming after me, making me the next target of a grand jury. So I won't tell you how large the discount is, but it's large when you use the code 24 starts now. My pillow appears to be going broke and CEO Mike Lindell, known to us as Mike Pillow or just Pillow, was on the Steve Bannon program explaining what is going on and that he has had to take out a ten million dollar loan to stay afloat. Folks, I take no pleasure in this. I really don't. I don't take pleasure in this. But actions have consequences. There can be a reaction to the things you say and do. And it can be bad for your business. Let's take a look at this clip. Here is Mike Pillow revealing that Pillow Enterprises, my pillow is at significant risk here. And just to keep things going and make payroll, apparently with his fifteen hundred employees, he had to take out a loan. Look at this about I guess your loan, the loan you took out at uh, at uh, my pillow. People people are all over you about this. Did he say the loan you took out at Mike pillow? Yeah, there last year it actually was three separate loans as the as the machine companies continue to sue us for. Oh, my God, he's blaming the machines. Billions of dollars. And um, we had to borrow almost $10 million at my pillow. We're a company. We're an employee owned company. It just baffles me, Steve. You've got all these companies are these machine companies out there, these voting machine companies that nobody even knew their name before, but everybody protects them. And yet you attack a USA company my pillow and my employees. And it's just disgusting. Yeah. So apparently he's taking his uh, anger out on the machines. We're doing a class action lawsuit against all machines. So listen, I've interviewed pillow a couple of times. And the last time he was on, I did ask him about the financial impact of this tomfoolery. And he told me I've spent about thirty five million dollars. So I, when he told me thirty five million, I think he was talking about in quote <laughs> these words, it's like do words have meaning investigating, quote, voter fraud, as well as on lawyers and traveling around and all of this different stuff. He always had the choice to stop or never begin this stuff in the first place. It is totally on him and blaming others. Again, they espouse personal responsibility and then they blame others. In this case, he's blaming inanimate objects. He's blaming the machines. The real tragedy is that as a result of this nonsense, his fifteen hundred employees could end up out of jobs. I'm not gloating here. It doesn't make me happy. I don't want people to lose their jobs or struggle to pay their bills. But this is the free market that they admire and get on their knees and pray at the altar of. Don't let them trick you. This had trouble written all over it when pillow showed up at the White House. This was very early in covid. I guess it would have been uh, 20, 2020, right? He showed up at the White House and said Trump was a gift from God as president or whatever it was that he said exactly. And we're going to be making masks at some of our pillow factories or whatever the promise was. By the way, did they ever make the masks? I don't know. I never heard about masks coming from pillows factory. 
And it's been downhill ever since. So it's not about woohoo, 1500 people might lose their jobs. It's about actions have consequences. And uh, apparently the combination of him spending what a couple of months ago was already 35 million on this crusade to try to overturn an election that doesn't need to be overturned, uh, combined with, I would guess, some deleterious impact on sales as a result of the fact that he has alienated at least half the country from ever buying his products. And to be honest, even some Republicans, I think now would say I'm not. That's the crazy pillow guy with the machines. I'm not buying up that pillow. I'll get a different pillow. How good could his pillow really be? And people write to me and say it's not actually that great. That is the impact. Those are the repercussions of what he did. Everyone allowed him to speak however he wanted. And his speech included going on TV, making wild claims about the election, hiring lawyers, getting cyber guys, having his symposium, as he would call it. And now that had an impact and other people are speaking. And the way that some businesses have spoken, I forget which ones, but a bunch of, of retail stores said we don't want the pillows anymore. They spoke by saying we don't want to do business with you anymore. Everybody gets to speak. It's a beautiful thing. And the speech that you choose to engage in can have consequences. It's a sad thing, but it looks like my pillow may be going broke. Imagine for a second that you try logging into your email account only to find that your password was changed an hour ago and then you get notifications of activity from your bank and then your credit cards. That is what identity theft is like. And it's a horrible feeling. And we dealt with it at the show not that long ago. But now I have an app called Aura, which gives me much more peace of mind. Our sponsor Aura is the all in one solution for keeping your online account safe because Aura will scan the dark web for your personal info, password, social security number and you get fast alerts when they find something. You also get fast alerts about credit inquiries. Aura protects all of your devices from malware. Aura even requests the removal of your info from data broker sites. And Aura helps you manage what your kids can do on their devices. You can restrict certain apps, set screen time limits, set focus times when you need them off of devices. Go to Aura.com slash Pacman to try it free for seven days. Your login credentials might already be floating around out there and Aura will tell you instantly for free. The link is down below.